when I was really popular and selling a whole lot of records. For me, I was kind of like, I always wanted to do a rap about God. Think about the impact that I would have reaching a whole lot of people with this new Christian rap and say, come on, let's, let's choose God. If I did that in the 80s, who knows what would life be like. In the mid 1980s, when hip hop was still new to the scene, there was a generation of Christian youth that loved God and loved hip hop. You were allowed to express yourself and feel like there's other people like you. So they decided to share their story. We grew up with the street, the hardcore heads. And then when we got saved, the father had saved these hardcore heads brothers. That's why we was gospel gangsters. Although the church was resistant to this new movement, labels like Forefront and Frontline Records decided to take a chance on this newfound genre. I think one of our biggest challenges was the establishment. You couldn't really find no love and support in the church, especially to be a Christian rapper. Pioneers get all the arrows. We took it left and right for years and years and years so that artists today like Lecrae have a bigger platform. Christian hip hop has always been moving forward. Even though it's been a subgenre, it's always been progressing. I think we can repeat on any level with any kind of music out there. If you put the name of God on something, it has to be something that's ordained by God. It was something that was part of my generation that gave me a bridge to meet God and to understand God. It was that strange to think back then that there would be Christian rap. We are going to turn the nation on to God through hip hop. That was what we were gonna do. Here's the premise. God created hip hop. Down with the King, featuring ETW, Toby Mac, Fred Lynch, Gospel Gangsters, Truth, Flame, Grits, Stephen Wiley, Soup the Chemist, Cross Movement, and Curtis Blow. 